In an article published in U.S. News and World Report, we're shown again how government can make almost anything worse. In the wake of the opioid crackdown, the CDC had said that painkillers should be a last resort for patients. The result? M medical societies greatly reduced prescriptions. Insurers refused to cover them for patients with cancel cancer or sickle cell anemia. And even when patients weren't denied coverage, they had to jump through more hoops than dolphins at SeaWorld. <laughs> now, there's no denying we've got an opioid problem, but you make it worse with broad strokes based on fear and misinformation. For one, the problem isn't prescription opioids, but street fentanyl. The addiction rate for prescriptions is low. The overdoses from street drugs are not. So broadly targeting the prescription side only harms cancer patients as well as other people with chronic and acute pain, meaning the lawful, not the lawless. As the media frames this as an epidemic, what you get is the same old one-size-crushes-all reaction that smacks every fly with a hammer. If you're a conservative and disagree, consider firearms. Should you punish lawful gun owners for the crimes of street gangs armed with illegal weapons? No, that would be a violation of your rights. So why suspend that logic here? The problem with opioids is that they work. And the worst thing you can do is let the government transfer business to the drug dealer who is more than happy to oblige. So, Dana, the good news here is that the CDC is actually kind of changing yeah. their, their, their story and, and, and mm -hmm. saying now you can prescribe them for certain things. They're kind of loosening the, the reins. Right, so they overreacted mm -hmm. to a problem that, look, people were worried, right? Yeah. And also to the bad actors, there were some that were, remember, the, the pushing out to yeah. of th tens of thousands of pills to one little town and then sending yeah. around fake prescriptions, uh, all of that. But as you said... Um, the government makes, m messes things up, right? Mm -hmm. So I have an idea. Why don't we have it take over all of our health care? There you go. That's, like, <laughs> that's the thing that I don't understand uh, yeah. of, of the whole Medicare for all piece, but we'll find out um, as he does his town hall with us on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that when you have government overreaction to a problem, it, you see that over and over again. It's about to happen in the tech sector. Yes. Right? So government is always behind yeah. on innovations, yeah. on technology, and then they're trying to make up for lost times, and they end up screwing things up. Exactly. You know, Emily, during Prohibition, there were deaths, a lot of deaths attributed to bathtub gin mm -hmm. because you couldn't buy it up in the, in, the, in the store. You had to make it. In the same case, this is happening here with opioids. People end up with street drugs, and they die. So isn't it better to have prescriptions where they could be, you know, modulated and moderated? Yes to that. Also, I want viewers to understand that um, right now we're seeing a rash of lawsuits and um, that have come to right. conclusion that have included quite a large amount of settlements mm -hmm. that big pharmas are making. And for example, I just want to use Oklahoma for a second as a case study for viewers to understand. In this $100 and $270 million settlement, all of that money is going, it's private money, obviously, from these drug makers who did not admit liability, but they agreed to settle. Mm -hmm. It's going to state institutions. And that's all staying within the state of Oklahoma. And so who do you think, however, is going to fund this after that initial $270 million goes toward establishing the National Center for Drug Addiction and Treatment and providing those medicines? The taxpayers will assume that debt afterwards, obviously. Mm -hmm. And as you, as you guys, I'm sure, remember after the big tobacco fiasco in, in the late 90s, there was a huge, or the, the debacle was what happened with the money mismanagement after with those millions of dollars of payments and settlements played out. So I just want that everyone should keep track and note what is occurring with these settlements and what happens and who carries the bill moving forward. Joe, you know, there has been some progress, Juan, in the sense that uh, I think President Trump convinced China to crack down on the Chinese fentanyl and their drug dealers. And I think they're being, I don't know if they're being punished by death if they're arrested, but in China, I think <laughs> that's, possible. What, that's possible. That's yeah. possible. So, you know, I am in sort of, sort of agreement with you, but I think where we part company is I think a lot of doctors, I think the... Uh, Pharmaceutical companies pushed opioids, legal opioids, at a very high rate into some communities, especially poor communities, uh, with tragic consequences. And when we hear about settlements, uh, even if they don't admit liability, I think there's a reason for the settlement. They know that they could get hit even harder. So for my money, I think, you know what? We've had pain management before we had opioids. Mm -hmm. There are other ways to deal with pain. But I think if we pull back and say, oh, you know what, people should have total access to opioids through the doctor. We don't understand that doctors, in fact, were part of the problem. We don't understand not, that the manufacturers... The government doesn't many. know more than the doctors. Well, I think, I think that we're, well, I, we could talk about abortion doctors. on that front, but yes, I agree with you, but I do think that when government sees that the people are being hurt 
and we do have high rates of death tied to this, both the street and before that, but the they, legal. They've been very, very inaccurate on the pure opioid overdoses. The rate of addiction from people who use opioids is so small. The two studies that I've read, the two major studies show it's like 1%. Tell me more about this bathtub gin you speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's what got you, huh? But that's it's a great it's a, it, 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 it's a great analogy that if 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 you make something illegal, people will just flock to the illegal. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure that's never happened to you though, Jesse. No, never happened to me. No. You know, Greg. You know, yep. people say about you. You know, you're on the Trump train. You know, you're choo choo driving the Trump train. <laughs> but not on this, man. You're you're fighting against the Trump war on opioids. I think I am. Yeah, good Absolutely. for you. You're so fair and balanced. <laughs> I think he's being cynical. No, I think he me. is, and I also think he's being inaccurate. Yes, I think not so. Not about the train, but about the <laughs> issue. Oh, what is going on here today? Did you just fact check me? <laughs>